What's up YouTube and welcome to a video which was requested by many of you, a depreciation analysis for the Porsche 911 GT3. And among those of you who requested the video were Simon and Terry. And that of course also means that you can request the video simply by commenting the name of the cars you would like to see analyzed down below in the comment section. And also make sure that you subscribe and smash the notification bell so you get actually notified when your requested analysis goes live. And if you're in a rush, you can simply send me an email to request a personalized analysis and my email address is included in the description of the video. All right, let's talk about the GT3 now. If you do a quick Google search, you will find that there are more opinions about the values of the GT3 than that there are actually cars available for sale on the market. Many of these opinions are however not backed up by any data and that is then also exactly why we are going to take a data-driven approach with the following steps. We will first look to some general numbers and have a look to the average price points in the market. After that, we will figure out then the depreciation per year and the depreciation per thousand miles driven. Furthermore, to put these numbers in a context, we will also compare the depreciation curve of a GT3 to the one of the Carrera S. We will continue then by making a price forecast for a GT3 and by having a look to the fair purchasing prices. All the way at the end of the video, we will conclude then on all of the numbers and on the GT3 market as a whole. Let's start now with the first step, which was the average price points, and that we're going to do with the histograms popping up over here. You can see it at the top, we have the price distribution for the full market and that the histograms below that one show different categorizations of the same market. Now let's enlarge this picture a little bit so you can see better what's going on. If we start by having a look to the full market at the top, you can see that there are 200 cars for sale and that the average price point is $143,407. And this average price point is by the way every time indicated by the dashed line going through the histogram. It is however evident that the market for the GT3 is split in two parts and therefore we also need to split our analysis in two parts. And if you are a little bit into Porsches, then you're probably not surprised to find out that the split in the markets was caused by the different generations. And this is perfectly illustrated by the histogram below the one of the full market, because this histogram mainly shows a split between the generations. You can see first of all that in orange we have now the 991.1, and that in green we have the 991.2. Furthermore, you can see that there are 90 cars for sale of the first generation, and that the first generation has an average price point of $122,384. Now when it comes to the second generation, we can see that there are 110 cars for sale, that they have an average price point of $168,361. Now if you're quick with numbers, then you've already seen that the premium you pay for the second generation over the first generation is $45,977. Now if we move one histogram down, then you can see that the used cars are displayed in orange, the used cars for sale by dealers in red, and that the new cars are displayed in green. And note that the average price points are now indicated two times. The ones on the left hand side are for the first generation and the ones on the right hand side are for the second generation. Overall, however, we can see that the difference in price levels is actually extremely small and a lot smaller than I expected. The largest price difference is namely $3,000 and this difference we can find in the first generation market where this is the difference between the used cars and the used cars sold by dealers. Let's have a look now to the last categorization, which categorizes the market by transmission type. First of all, we can see that the 991.1 market consists fully out of automatic cars because the manual option was not available. If we have a look then to the 991.2 market, then we can see that the manuals are a bit more popular. There are namely 63 manuals for sale versus only 47 automatic cars. Furthermore, you can see that the manuals are considerably more expensive as you pay a premium of $7,035. So now we have those descriptive statistics out of the way, let's have a look to the depreciation per year with the graph appearing over here. You can see that we've model year on the horizontal axis and price on the vertical axis and that each blue bubble represents a car for sale in today's market. Furthermore, you can see that the depreciation line is indicated by the blue solid line going through the graph and that the black axis represent the average price point for each given model year. Now if we have a look to the graph, we can see that the average depreciation per year is $13,820 or 8% of the average new price of a car. And both the absolute depreciation rate and the relative depreciation rate are not bad numbers for a car in this price segment. It is however key to understand that these are average numbers and you can also see then that there's quite a large drop between the Gen 1 and the Gen 2 model years. We therefore need to have a look to the depreciation curve split by generation type, and that's exactly what's displayed in the graph over here. You can see that in blue we have now the first generation, and that the second generation is displayed in orange. And if we now have again a look to the numbers, 
Then we can see that the average depreciation per year for the first generation is $8,315 and that it is $9,272 for the second generation. Furthermore, it even seems to be the case that there's a slight bottoming pattern in the first generation market. The depreciation in the last year is namely only $5,836 and this is then again only 5% of the average price point of a car with model year 2015. However, we need to be a little bit careful in interpreting this number. The cars from model year 2014 have namely, on average, a lower mileage than the cars from model year 2015. Normally, you would however expect to see the exact opposite effect, namely that the mileage increases as the cars get older. So then, let's now compare the depreciation curve of the GD3 to perhaps the most popular 911 out there, the Carrera S. And that comparison is shown over here, where you can see that we've been origin out the Carrera S and in blue still the GT3. If you would by the way like to see the full depreciation analysis on the Carrera S, then I recommend that you check out that video by clicking on the link appearing above here. Now if we look to the depreciation curve of the Carrera S, then we can see that the average depreciation rate per year is $8,806 or 6.4%. And with these numbers, the average depreciation rate on the Carrera S is actually lower than it is for a GT3. Remember that the average rates for that car were $13,820 and 8%. However, this is not a completely fair comparison because the depreciation curve for the Carrera S contains a lot more model years than it does for the GT3. And generally speaking, the more model years, the lower the average depreciation number. So let's have a look to some specific model years. We can see namely that both cars differ tremendously in the beginning of the depreciation curve. In the first year, the average price of a new Carrera S drops by $27,318 or 20% of the average price of a new car. Now for the GT3, this drop is only $9,272, equaling 5% of the average price of a new car. And that is a huge difference in depreciation and a lot more than I expected. Now if we looked into some of the cars which have the same age, of let's say a model year 2015, then we can see that the depreciation rate for a Carrera S reduced to $5,308. And this again equals that 6.4% of the average price of a 2015 car. Now for the GT3, we saw that it appears to be the case that there's a bottom in the market, but that we had to be a little bit careful in interpreting the numbers in that way. Now using the numbers which we have, then we saw that the depreciation rate for the GT3 in that year is $5,863, equaling 5%. Now comparing the depreciation rates in full, I think it's quite amazing to see how close the relative depreciation numbers are, especially for the older cars. And that is something which I didn't expect to find. Now let's quickly have a look to the depreciation per thousand miles driven before we dive into the forecasted prices and the fair purchasing prices. The depreciation per thousand miles is now displayed in the graph popping up over here. And you can see that we have miles now instead of model year on the horizontal axis. If we look to the depreciation line, then we can see that the average depreciation per thousand miles driven is $2,539. And I used a straight line over here, so you can see very good that this is an average number. You can see namely that the depreciation is a lot higher for the cars which have less than 10,000 miles and a lot lower for the cars which have more than 20,000 miles. Now let's also see how these numbers Compared to the ones of the Carrera S, you can see that that car is now included in orange and that the average depreciation rate is $957 per thousand miles driven. Now if we compare this to the GT3, then we can see that the absolute depreciation is a bit lower, but that the relative effect is larger. We can therefore conclude that the GT3 is more sensitive to mileage than a Carrera S, but I don't think anyone is really surprised by that conclusion. So then, we have now the depreciation per year and the depreciation per thousand miles driven. And that means that we know now the two key elements which affect the price of a GT3. It are then also those two elements which are used to make a price forecast. And that forecast is displayed in the graph over here. You can see that in blue, we still have the current depreciation curve for a GT3, but that in orange, there are now forecasted points included. And those forecasted points show the price for a 2014 car one year from now. Furthermore, you can see that there are in total 50 points and there are 50 points because each point represents a car with a different mileage. If we have a look into the highest forecasted price point, then we can see that this is of course for a car with the lowest mileage. This point over here namely represents a 2014 car one year from now, which by then would have a mileage of 1920 miles and a price of $119,880. If we have a look into the lowest forecasted price, which is $93,682, 
Then we can see that this is for a car which has the highest mileage of 34,777 miles. Now if we aggregate all of the forecasted price points, then we end up at a mean average forecasted price point of $116,380. And if we go back to the graph then, then we can see that this means an average drop of $9,154. And at first, this might seem a bit strange because the drop is actually higher than the price drop between model year 2015 and model year 2014. Now the reason for this is that the forecast assumes that the mileage for a 2014 car will increase with the same rate as it did historically. If you would assume that the mileage would increase less than it did historically, then the forecasted points would be shifted slightly upwards. I think however that the assumption which is built into the forecast, namely that the mileage increases in line with the historical increases, is quite a sensible one. Furthermore, I think that it is a rather conservative assumption and I'd rather show you a conservative forecast than a forecast which is way too optimistic. We're going to move on to the fair purchasing prices and we're going to figure out what a fair purchasing price is by using the model year, the price and the mileage. I namely inputted all of these factors into a machine learning algorithm which determines if a car is following the normal market dynamics or not. And the rationale behind this is of course that if a car is following the normal market dynamics, it is most likely to be priced fairly. Cars which don't follow the market pattern are either overpriced or underpriced. I by the way only did the fair purchasing prices analysis for the 991.1 because this is the cheapest version and it has one additional model year available in the data. Now the result of that analysis is shown in the 3D plot over here where you can see that we have indeed have the model year, the price and the mileage. Also, you can see that each car is again represented by a bubble and that the bubbles are colored. And the darker the color of the bubble, the more likely it is that that specific car is following the normal market dynamics. If we take a look then at the results, then we can see that there are actually two fair processing price categories. The first category is for the low mileage cars, which means that the cars need to have a mileage of below 10,000 miles. And for these cars, the fair processing price lays between $123 and $132,000. The second category is for the cars which have a higher mileage, namely between 20,000 and 30,000 miles, and these have a fair purchasing price ranging between $110 and $120,000. Furthermore, you can see that there are quite some white bubbles in the market, and these are the cars which are either priced over the market or under the market trend. The bubbles over here are priced for example quite aggressively, if you consider the mileage to price to model year ratio. Now those cars are of course not the highest spec cars on the market, but if you don't care so much about that, then they are definitely worth to check out. And with all of those statistics in the pocket, it's time to conclude on the GT3 market. I think it is fair to say that the relative depreciation rate for a GT3 is quite low and that by that it also lives up to its expectation. Nevertheless, in this price segment, even a low relative depreciation rate still means a high depreciation rate in monetary terms. On top of that, we saw that there's not really a bottom formation yet in the market and that also the forecast predicted that the depreciation rate one year from now would be quite equal to the past depreciation rates. Now in line with those observations, we also saw that some parties on the market are offering aggressive pricing, which can be 10 to 15,000 price under the average price for a similar car. Practically this means that if you were to buy a GT3 now, you would need to factor in a depreciation rate equal to the current depreciation rate. Now before you tune off, I still have one important note for my European viewers. This analysis was namely based on the US market and contrary to many other analysis, the results of this analysis are not necessarily applicable to the European market. The upcoming 992 GT3 will namely come in Europe with a particle filter, a so-called GPF, which is claimed to reduce the power and also the noise. And these are of course things which a GT3 buyer definitely does not want to hear. It could however in turn increase the attractiveness of the 991 GT3 and therefore also decrease the depreciation on those cars. Now if you live in the US, then you are probably lucky because as far as I'm aware, the filter won't be applied there. And on that note, we arrive at the end of the video. Now if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up because it takes a lot of effort and time to put these videos together. Also make sure to check my channel then for more depreciation analysis and you can already check out the analysis for the 991S over here and the one for the Camaro ZL1 over here. As always, thank you for watching and I see you next week for a new video.